But tonight, I want to start here. I'm going to start with a question that the Obama campaign hopes that you never ask. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Well, judging by the folks at the Democratic Convention, you'd think that we were living in the land of milk and honey where people are frolicking around with their free health care and contraceptives without a care in the world. Watch. Uh, on a personal level, would you say that you're better off now than you were four years ago? Yeah, I think four years ago we were at the abyss most definitely. Sure, I, I think we're obviously better off. Absolutely. Definitely. I mean, the, the trends are all there. I'm definitely better off. Ultimately, I think I am. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Personally, I am. Absolutely. Um, four years ago, I didn't have a job. I can actually say yes, I am. I certainly am better off now. We are all better off now than we were four years ago. Oh, yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> so I would say yes, the country is improving. Economically, I am. Well, maybe it's the crazy hats or the excessive buttons. I'm not sure. Or Michelle Obama's really well-toned arms. Um, but I was caught by the one answer that said all of the data is there. All the data points to it. Really? I don't know what caused those answers, um, but it wasn't anything to do with reality or facts. Here are the facts I want you to see tonight. Last week, we showed you these charts. People receiving food stamps way up, up 46% since Obama took, took office. 15 million more people now are, are on food stamps in this country. Median household income is down $4,300. That means your income. Gas prices are up from $1.84 to $3.74 a gallon. The federal debt has just rocketed past $16 trillion. Obama's solution to all of this? More government, more regulation. He's put more trust in a printing press than small businesses. He's put more trust in Ben Bernanke than you. And he is selling America on an ideology that is a proven failure. His pitch, I'm quoting, he needs more time to experiment. The truth is, it will take more than a few years for us to solve challenges that have built up over decades. It'll require common effort and shared responsibility and the kind of bold, persistent experimentation that Franklin Roosevelt pursued during the only crisis worse than this one. Okay, when, when government experiments, it leads to the Chevy Volt. No experimentation on my time, not with my children's money, not, not with my country. I didn't ask you to experiment. That is the job of the private sector, quite honestly. We take the risk with our own money. America should not be made to suffer four more years because some radical wants to experiment with their own Marxist utopian ideas in the hopes that maybe they'll be the first one in all of history that can make them work. They don't work. They fail every time. They've been tried all over the planet. And they have failed all over the planet. Obama keeps saying that Republicans want to keep pushing the same old policies of the past. Yes, I will agree with the president. Those are progressive Republican policies, and they fail. The policies the Democrats are trying, raising taxes and spending big government too, those are also progressive, also a little more socialist, and they fail as well. There's a mountain of evidence, and in the last three years, Obama has only added to it. Here are some of the examples that you need to see. The latest jobs report. The dishonest is going to spin the jobs report as 8.3 to 8.1. It's a drop. It's a great sign. But the report is so clearly terrible that most media outlets haven't even bothered to try to spin it. The labor participation rate has dropped so sharply, 368,000 people just quit looking for work last month. This is really bad. This is the lowest now that it has been since 1981. Here's where it gets doubly bad. We now have 82 more million Americans living now here that want a job than we did in 1981. The way we calculate the numbers now, those people who quit looking, they're just no longer counted in the unemployment rate. It's a trick that we learned with Jimmy Carter. If the participation rate was the same as when Obama took office, unemployment would be officially 11.2 percent.
If you include part-time workers who are seeking full-time job, unemployment is now at 14.7%. 14.7% of our people here in America are either unemployed or just struggling to get by. To give you some perspective, when Jimmy Carter was in office, unemployment, the way they calculated it, which would take it at 14.7, his unemployment rate was 7.6. They also had double-digit inflation, which is coming. You combine double-digit inflation with unemployment and you have stagflation. That's where the real misery comes. And we're headed that direction with much bigger numbers. So when you look at the real numbers of unemployment, and where we're headed now. And you know that Jimmy Carter days <laughs> were bad. You begin to think maybe what's coming is not going to be a picnic. 23.1 million Americans are now unemployed, underemployed, or have given up looking for work. And the average length of unemployment has just doubled from 19.8 to 39.2 weeks. 97.3 million Americans now qualify as low income. In America, another 49.1 million are in poverty. This is not us. The average hourly wages are going now in the wrong direction. If you work paid by the hour, you're in trouble. Your pay has gone down and you know it. The average pay for self-employed Americans fell by $3,721. A key economic indicator, manufacturing, has been a drag now on the economy, dragging and declining for three straight months. And the sector just shed 15,000 jobs, and that was in one month. And over the, over the uh, last uh, uh, year, since, or four years since Obama took office, they have lost over half a million jobs. What are we building anymore? This is happening despite all of the shovel-ready jobs meant to create construction jobs fixing our nation's crumbling infrastructure, right? We have crumbling infrastructure. The government runs to the aid. Well, over a million construction jobs have been lost since 2009. How is that possible when you have one client spending $1 trillion to get construction going again? Under Obama's watch, the velocity of money has plunged to a post-World War II low. Obama has spent so much time and energy jamming health care down America's throat, and we've been arguing about that. He excused this unnecessary detour from the economy by arguing it would help the economy. But we've been so busy arguing about it, we haven't looked at the facts. Here's the facts. Under Obama, the average cost of family health care premiums have now increased from $12,680 a year to $15,073. It's not helping, it's hurting us. Are you better off than you were four years ago? 5.7 million residential mortgages are either now 30 days delinquent or in foreclosure. One in every four Americans are now underwater in their mortgage. That means they, they owe more than it's worth. When is that price going to come back? New home sales are at levels not seen since the 1980s. And you think to yourself, well, wow, that's pretty bad. But... Let me put that into perspective. Why were they this low in 1980? Because they had to jack the interest rates. They had to jack the interest rates to 20%. Now imagine, you want to go out and buy a house. You imagine your mortgage payment. What would it be if they changed your current 4 or 5% interest on your loan to 20%? Are you going to sell any, any homes in America? They're practically giving away loans right now, and people are only buying at a pace equal to the worst interest rates Americans have ever seen. What's coming when they have to raise the interest rate? College tuition. President Obama talks a good game. He says he's all into colleges, and he's trying to get kids into school. Well, then why hasn't he asked this one question? Why has tuition gone up 25% under Obama? He's never talked about the greedy professors or the greedy institutions. He's only promised to pay for your college, meaning he doesn't have the money. It's not Obama cash. It means everybody who pays taxes is going to pay for that college education. Now, I don't mind pitching in. I don't mind helping. 
But could we at least try to get maybe a better price? It's a nice little scam these universities have going on, isn't it? And here's the problem. While he's saying, we're going to guarantee your loan, so make it easier, not surprisingly, the student loan debt has gone up $1 trillion. That's more than America's credit card and auto loan debt. He is doing to the college age exactly what Freddie and Fannie did to the homeowners of America. Because now the default rate is at 8.8% for student loans. But that's only because government only measures those who are in default within two years. They, they're doing it so they can play with the numbers. If you count anyone who's in default of their government-sponsored loan after two years, the default rate is 17%. And the Department of Education predicts the default rate could reach as high as 49%. Who's going to pay those loans? You will, with your tax dollars, even if you don't get the benefit. And where do those tax dollars go? To the universities, please. The kids are now coming out of school without a job, and they have a mountain of debt to pay off. You can't hide the rising cost of groceries. How are they going to afford that? Food inflation is here. Corn is just one example. Monthly food costs for a typical family of four with young children has increased nearly 10%. And guess what? Americans are also getting older. While we're impoverishing the lower, we're also doing it to the older. Government is going to need more money real soon. You better hope those, you better hope those 20 somethings get a job. Because who's going to pay for the retirement? S&P 500 volume has steadily declined since 2008. More than 91 million Americans are now dependent on something from the federal government. Obama says he needs more time to experiment. We are out of time, America. This is the same guy who, back in 2009, calculated that if we'd have an unemployment rate down to 5.5% today, if you just gave him a trillion dollars, you gave it to him. Begging for more time doesn't sound like somebody who, as Bill Clinton said last week, believes it would be impossible for any president to fix the economy in one term. Sounds more like desperation, and it is. Forget all of the BS. Forget all of the attack ads. All of the soaring rhetoric and the toned arms from both sides. Root yourself in the truth.